Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be analyzing a Korean challenger player Roach where he's playing Akali vs Irelia. This gameplay is after the Akali nerfs, but both of these champions are still really overpowered so it should be a fun lane to go over. Let's break down the matchup first, then we'll get into the gameplay. Akali is an AP melee assassin vs Irelia and AD bruiser. Akali wins in burst trades with her shroud and Irelia wins in extended trades. They have equal range and equal wave clear, but Akali doesn't have mana costs, so she gets the slight wave clear advantage. The way this matchup goes, Akali wins trades when she uses Shroud, but when it's on cooldown, that's Irelia's window to take an extended trade or all in. Knowing this, let's create a game plan for Akali. Mission 1, get a minion lead. To get a minion lead, you have to push the lane, but sometimes you don't get the chance to do that early on. When we get into the gameplay, we'll see how Roach gets the push lead using a minion wave trick. Mission 2, take burst trades. Since we know Irelia wins extended trades, we want to use Akali's shroud to take burst trades and back off. Mission 3, get a health lead and freeze. As we have seen in other videos, Irelia wants to let you push, then run you down the lane with an extended trade. So if we get a health lead and freeze, she'll be useless. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. Before laning, Roach needs to leash his kindred at red buff. Like we said in another recent video, Leashing in high elo gives up the chance to get a push lead because the enemy laner gets to the wave first. So he needs to think about how he's going to get a minion lead for mission 1. When he gets into lane after leashing, Irelia lands her E and a few autos, getting a nice little chunk onto Akali. But Roach makes sure to trade back with his Q to get some return damage. Pretty standard level 1 stuff. Since Irelia E has a longer cooldown than Akali Q, he goes in and pokes her again before collecting a few CS. Also, if you're wondering why Irelia started E and not the standard Q, it's because of a small invade that happened before laning. Either way, the level 1 wouldn't be too much different. Anyways, they both collect a few CS and hit level 2. Irelia lands her stun onto Roach, but he goes into Shroud to prevent the extended trade. After Shroud drops, he backs off. His minions are about to die, so he needs to retreat until his next wave gets here. Now that the next wave is here, you should be able to notice that he has a small freeze since the ranged minions aren't hitting the tower. He's going to use this to start mission 1 and get his minion lead. Let's keep going and see how he does it. He clears a few CS, and now the wave is even, 6 minions to 6. And if you remember the even minion rule, when the wave is even, if it's closer to one side of the lane, it will push the other way because that wave will get there before the other one. So basically, what he did was, since he couldn't get the push early from leashing, he made sure the wave didn't crash and let the tower kill the melee ones. Then, kill the ranged ones to make the wave even, so it now starts slow pushing the other way for mission 1. Since the wave is right in front of Akali's tower, Irelia can't really trade with her, meaning Roach can keep throwing Qs whenever Irelia comes in for CS. Irelia lands a stun here, but Roach makes sure to shroud right away to prevent any extra damage. The next wave is getting here now, which will combine with the wave he already has to give him the minion lead. The wave still isn't that big though, so he's going to want to wait for the next wave to really build it up, so he's going to last hit until it gets here. Now that it's here, he starts to position more aggressively since he knows he has the minion wave advantage. Irelia knows this as well, so she uses her stun to grab a few CS and also gives up a few. Roach finishes clearing the wave, then drops a ward in the brush since he's gankable now with where the wave is. And as soon as he gets back into lane, he goes to try and pressure Irelia when she's going for this minion, but she uses her stun instead, landing it and going in. But Roach has the minion wave advantage still, so he knows Irelia can't take an extended trade here. He uses his shroud and his E to get a really nice chunk of damage, then backs off to collect his CS. After clearing the wave, I really TP's back to lane since she was afraid of getting dove with such a large wave about to crash on the tower, and because I really TP'd, Roach is forced to recall and TP as well because I really spent her gold so she has the item advantage. As soon as he TP's back to lane, I really lands her stun and goes in, but the same thing happens and he loses the trade because of Akali's shroud. He tries to land a stun as Roach is backing off, so he can take the extended trade that he wants, but Roach dodges it, giving him the health lead to start mission 3. This was a huge misplay from Irelia. If we go back to when she started that trade, the wave was going to slow push towards Akali, so she should have been patient, got a big minion wave, then went for a trade. 
but since she went in too early and gave Akali her burst trade with Shroud, she's really chunked and the wave is pushing. Irelia knows this is really bad, so she's playing safe using the brushes, then walks out because Nidalee is here. If you're wondering why Akali isn't going in right now, it's because his team is pinging that Nidalee could be here, so he doesn't want to throw this huge lead he's about to get. All he has to do is let the wave push and freeze with his huge health lead. Now that the wave is closer to her tower, Irelia knows she's screwed so she's forced to recall. This will give Roach a huge lead since the blue wave will push and kill all the red minions denying her a ton of CS. Let's just speed through this while waiting for Irelia to get back to lane. Now that she's back, Akali has a level lead and the lane is still frozen. Irelia's goal right now is to avoid trades until she hits level 6 and give up as much CS as necessary. But Irelia needs to watch skill cap videos since if you remember a really common concept we talk about with top lane is that the jungler will be waiting for you to come back to lane so it's important to ward before showing yourself. Kindred comes from behind and they end up chasing Irelia down getting Roach's first kill. This is the power of a freeze when you have a health lead. Not only does it give you an experience and CS advantage because they might have to recall or give up CS, it also makes the lane super easy to gank for your jungler. Anyways, after killing her, Roach clears the wave and recalls. When he gets back to lane, the wave is pushing to him slowly and Irelia is level 6. Since his ult is down, it's important to play safe and avoid anything too dangerous since Irelia has a window to win the 1v1 until Akali ult is back up. So he's going to play cautiously, avoiding the stun and poking a little bit, then backs off. The way he's meeting a better spot now, where he can actually trade back without being too scared. If Irelia wants to take an extended trade, she would just die to the tower. She lands a stun, goes in, gets chunked really hard because of Akali's shroud, then tries to run. But Roach landed his E, giving him the jump to get in there and finish her off. Yeah, so this is what happens when an OP champion gets a lead. Although, Irelia didn't have to die here. All she needed to do was avoid trading and push the wave into the tower, then let the wave push back. But instead, she went in on every stun she landed and let Akali chunk her with burst trades. Anyways, the lane is definitely over after how easy that last kill was, so let's recap. At the start of the lane, Roach had to leash, so he was forced to let the wave push, but froze the wave and created an even wave so he could get a slow push to get the minion lead. When he had a big wave behind him, he wasn't hesitant to take trades and chunked Irelia hard enough to make a recall and TP back to lane. This gave Irelia the item advantage, so Roach recalled and TP'd back as well. When he got back to lane, Irelia went in right away after landing her stun, but lost the burst trade with the wave pushing to Akali. Roach punished this super hard by freezing, forcing Irelia to recall again and miss a ton of CS while in base. Roach kept the wave frozen until Irelia got back, and as soon as she got back to lane, Kindred was there to gank her, giving Roach an easy kill and putting him super far ahead. When he got back to lane, the wave was pushing to him, and Irelia made the same mistake of going in and trying to trade into a Kali Shroud with the wave right in front of her tower, denying any extended trade. Roach punished again really easily because of how far ahead he was and got another kill, closing the lane out. That's gonna be it for this one, thanks for watching.